Hey everybody, Pastor Brennan Witten here, back with you, another Faith Fuel video devotional. We are continuing on our 21 days of joy here at Toronto State Church. And I am so excited about what God is doing. I'm just, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the way we're growing in joy. Uh, you know, we really said we want to take these 21 days and dedicate ourselves to God. And we want to really dedicate this year to the Lord. And, and we really felt, again, this emphasis of joy. So, again, our core text has been Nehemiah 8, verse 10, that he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready, for this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So we really felt like, again, God wants to strengthen us in joy in this season, which I know he's doing by faith. I believe it. God wants to strengthen us in joy, and he's also training us in joy for the seasons which are to come. So again, just laying a foundation here, we've been talking about uh, you know, kind of a recipe of joy, so to speak. J, Jesus, O, others, Y, you. And this week, again, our focus has been on others. And it's been on our relationship with others and walking with others, being right reliant to others. There, there's so much joy that God has for us in our relationships with others. There's so much that's connected to walking with others that brings joy. I, I've Given the example, of there's so much joy I have because of my relationship with Pastor Sharon. There's so much joy I have because of my relationship with my kids. Those are just two levels of relationships. So many others of joy in my life because of relationships. But if we cut ourselves off from others, we actually cut ourselves off from so much joy that God has for us. Just as if we cut ourselves off from God, we cut ourselves off from so much joy that he has for us. And so we, we've been talking about there's just so much joy wrapped in a relationship with others. And if we don't relate well to others in the way God's called us to, we're going to miss out. But if we will, we will really embrace what he is showing us and teach us relationships with others. We're going to walk in so much joy. And so we've been talking about several different aspects so far in this section of the teaching regarding others. We talked about loving others. We've talked about serving others. We've talked about giving to others. Today I want to build on top of that again and there's actually a little bit of a connect between us, but today I want to talk about the power of forgiving others. All right, so we talked about the power of giving to others and sharing what God's given us with others, and there's great joy in that. I want to talk to you about the joy that comes from forgiveness. See, guys, one of the key, key, key areas to walking in joy is learning to keep our heart pure from bitterness and unforgiveness and learning how to forgive. You know, one of the things that Pastor Sharon and I have remarked on, and I, I'm sure I've shared this in some different contexts here at Toronto City Church, but, you know, we meet some older saints, you know, who, you know, whether they've been in ministry or not. I, I can think of a couple who've been in ministry. And, you know, sometimes you, you get to sit with them. They just they have such a sweet spirit. There's this love for Jesus. There's this maturity. And, and you know, sometimes you forget, though, because you get to sit with them, and they start to share a bit of the story of their life. You hear about some of the things they've been through. You hear about some of the ways they were hurt or betrayed by people, some of what they walked through. And, but then you see them there in that moment, and their spirits are just so pure. I mean, that's one of the things to me that, that is just so powerful when I meet a man or woman of God who's been through some stuff, but they've just kept their spirit pure because they've forgiven and they've chosen to walk in love and they've chosen to walk in grace. There's something so powerful about that. But you know, on the flip side of that, I can think of, of people I've met who are kind of near the end of their journey. Some in ministry, some not. And, and somewhere along the way, I don't even, I'm not even trying to be critical, but somewhere along the way, they just, it got to be too much and they got bitter. It got inside of them, right? And I mean, no, no matter how much the water is crazy outside your boat, as long as you're, there's no water in your boat, you're going to float. But when the water that's outside starts to get into the boat, when the, the, the stuff starts to get in you, that's when you start to sink, right? And so, so there's just something that's so powerful about, about forgiving. And forgiving others. And if we will learn to forgive others and to live in this place of forgiveness, we'll be walking in joy. There's just this joy of the Lord. But but if the enemy can get bitterness in there, if he can get unforgiveness in there, if he can get these things in there, then he can really rob us of our joy. Again, the water gets in the boat, the boat starts to sink. He'll rob us of our joy because we choose not to, or we're just, we can't seem to find a way in ourselves, because really, we got to do it in history, but we, well, really when push comes to shove, is because we will not forgive. And so, this is a little bit more of a sobering one, right? Loving one another, amazing, serving one another, awesome, giving, okay, forgiving one another, that's where a lot of us go, ooh, because it's like, 
because forgiveness is is a serious topic. It's 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 hard because if you have to forgive someone, it's because they've hurt you. It's because they've done something wrong to you. And I've been in pastoral ministry long enough to know that life can be very hard. And 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 many of us can go through some really, really difficult and hurtful circumstances with people. That is like absolutely brutal. Like absolutely brutal. And 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 again, I'm not trying to minimize forgiveness or just say, oh yeah, you should just be able to forgive. What's wrong with you? No, no, it's a work of the Holy Spirit of hearts, but guys, it's so vital because you can choose bitterness. You can let bitterness be in your house, but bitterness and joy cannot coexist. And and, and you may still have moments of fleeting joy, but man, that bitterness just starts to eat away at you and it starts to suck all the joy out of your life. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. My encouragement today, wherever you're at, is just do a heart check and say, Lord, is there anyone I need to forgive? Right? Is there anyone I've been getting bitter towards? Is there anyone I'm holding things against? Even nowadays, you know, with oh, lockdowns and social justice and all these things in the middle of that, we need to speak for righteousness. We need to speak for justice. I'm not talking about not standing for what's right, but in the middle of it, do you know, how's our heart doing? How is our heart doing? Because it's so important that we look at that and we just make sure, Lord, I don't want to carry bitterness. I don't want to carry unforgiveness. I want to walk in joy, right? Because that's what you have for me. Joy. And again, I don't say that lightly. Trust me, I've, I've been on some journeys and I, I know some of the ongoing battles and some ongoing journeys for myself, but it's just you submit to the Lord and you allow me. You just, I choose to forgive. I choose to bless this person. I choose to release this situation, this social media you know, person who slammed me or this, I just, I forgive and I let it go. You know, I don't have time to read through it all right now, but Matthew 18, 21 to 34 talks about the unforgiving servant. And you can reference it later, but basically there's this man, he owed the king an un, incredibly unpayable amount of money. It, as was the custom at that time, because he couldn't pay, he and his family were going to get thrown into prison until they could settle the accounts. It sounds really terrible to us, but that was just kind of the law and the way things worked. But he falls on his knees before the master. He says, please give me time to repay you. Well, the master knows, the king knows. There's no way he's going to repay this. But the king has compassion. He forgives his debt, so he forgives it all. And you can imagine the, the weight that must have lifted off that man. I mean, he walks down the street. He's thinking, I'm free. I don't have this debt anymore. Right? Some of us, we know what that would feel like with some debts we've had. And the boss says he saw another servant who owed him. Uh, my, it was just, it was like a couple hundred bucks, equivalent was. And he went, the man said, you need to pay me. I said, I couldn't. He said, well, you know, I'm going to throw you in jail. And, he ended up throwing him in prison until he could pay his debt. And some of the king's servants saw this. He went back and reported to the king. And the king called this man in the bus. He was really angry at him. And he said, I forgave you this incredible debt. Could you not just forgive your servant this? And he says, and because of this, you are going to be thrown in prison. You're going to be turned over to the tormentors. And so there's a lot in this passage, guys. But there's several things I want to just remind you of. I mean, we come back to this, but it's just such a foundational teaching. God has forgiven us an unpayable debt. And so part of what he's clear in that, he says, listen, I've forgiven you so you can be with me for eternity. But he's saying, I want to expect you and I want to empower you to forgive others. And in the courts of heaven, it's very unjust for us to have received this incredible forgiveness, but then us to refuse to forgive others. Now, there's several clauses. There's kind of petty things that we get bitter over that we should just need to let go. But then there's some very serious things that some of us have gone through in our lives, and they're really hard to forgive people. We may feel, like, how can I even forgive this person ever? But again, see, what happens is when we hold bitterness and unforgiveness, we get put into a prison. It's not a physical prison, but it's an emotional prison, a spiritual prison. And, and, and we get turned over to tormentors. Uh, there's things that torment our lives when we hold on to bitterness. And so, yes, that person did something terrible to you. I'm not minimizing that one inch. But here's what I'm saying. They already did so much to you. Why are you allowing the bitterness towards them to keep you in prison now and to keep you wounded now? You're worth too much. You're too valuable. Right? There's some, there's some of you maybe watching this. There's torments that are happening in your life because you can't let go of this bitterness. And God does not want you to be tormented anymore. He wants you to be free. But freedom comes through forgiveness. Freedom comes through making a decision to let go of bitterness, to let go of forgiveness. And, and, and joy comes. We will never walk in the joy that God has for us if we are walking in bitterness. And so I just want to call to you. I want to encourage you. I want to implore you. I'm trying to think of every word I can. 
Make a decision by God's grace today with God's help. I'm going to forgive. 2021 is going to be a year of forgiveness. 2021 is going to be a year of no bitterness. 2021 is going to be a year of just blessing and releasing people and walking in the freedom that God has for me and walking in the joy that God has for me. It's hard. To, it's hard not. It is hard to forgive in many instances, but I'll tell you what's even harder. It's even harder to live a life that's void of joy because we can't forgive. Now, if this has kind of hit a nerve for you, I know I've barely scratched the surface in 10 minutes. I really want to encourage you to reach out to a leader, reach out to a pastor. We can talk about journey. A great book to read is The Bait of Satan by John Bevere. He talks all about forgiveness in there. He's got some videos online about it too. If you just search it, Bait of Satan, John Bevere. It's a wonderful text on forgiveness that takes a little bit of what I shared here and brings it into a whole book and a whole bunch of messages. So if that's something you know that you and Jesus need to work on this year, I really encourage you. Don't wait, because there's so much joy. There's so much that he has for you, but it's going to be on the other side of your forgiveness. Can I pray for you today? Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for every person watching this video, and even as we've taken some time to talk about forgiveness. It's always good for all of us to do a checkup, because life is hard, and life can hurt sometimes, and we all have to stay in a regular place of choosing to forgive. And so I pray in Jesus' name for every person listening and watching, that you will just speak to us about any area we need to walk in forgiveness. You'll speak to us in any area maybe that the root of bitterness has started to creep in because we want to have hearts that are totally pure before you. And Father, I thank you for joy. I thank you for joy. I thank you for joy. And God, that we can trade our bitterness for joy if we give our bitterness to you. And so we love you, Lord, and we thank you for this. In Jesus' name, everyone agree with me, said, amen. Awesome. All right. Well, this... Several reminders, as I always like to do this week. Let's keep going strong with our Bible reading. Make sure you're in a connections. Again, joy comes from community. Joy comes from being connected. Get connected. Remember, tomorrow night, that's Friday evening, we have our community Bible study with another local church. We're going kingdom here. So we're excited about that. And keep plugging away at our daily encouragement challenge. Who can you encourage today? Who can you build up today? And then remember as well, if they're not all full, still sign up for a prophetic, personal prophetic or healing ministry slot. And next week, we're going to have a whole ton of Purpose webinars. So make sure that you figure out when they are, get registered for the Purpose webinars. We just want to help you just live out the purpose that God has for you in 2020. We love you. God bless you. I'll see you again tomorrow. It's going to be the last day of week two, at least in our video devotionals. So I'll see you there. God bless you.